This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Um, you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No, no. Nope. Just stop. Get real. Guys, welcome to DBL. It is most definitely a Frada. It's a Frada. It's a Frada. I'm wearing a sparkle, so you know it's Friday. Things are off the rails. We got Steph Jones here. Oh, We're very I excited. Know. Off the rails. I things know. Stephanie's here. Yeah, no, but things are, it's going to be a fun day. That's what I like. Oh. All right, we're starting today with some big news. Oh, yeah, sad, kind of, about the Golden Bachelor <laughs> couple. So millions of us tuned in to watch Gary Turner and Teresa Nist fall in love on the hit show, and then we all celebrated as the two got married in a lavish televised ceremony in January. But now, yeah, guys, just three months later, they're getting divorced. Here's what they had to say about it on GMA. Teresa and I have had a number of heart-to-heart -heart conversations and we've looked closely at our situation, our living situation and so forth and, and we've kind of come to the conclusion mutually mm -hmm. that it's probably time for us to um, dissolve our marriage. Get a divorce. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Three months after getting married. Yes. yes. Lots of people are asking, but what about their love? <laughs> are they? Okay. Well, the two insist they do have it still. Watch. I can't help but notice you're still holding hands. Yes. <laughs> Did you fall out of love? No. No. Uh -uh. no. I still love this person. Yeah, I still There's love There's no him. doubt in my mind. I still am in love with her. I root for her every day. Mm. Uh. Wasn't looking at her. <laughs> That's uh, look. Mm. I told you guys this from the beginning. This was some not. First of all, I I watched this show out of obligation for this show, and that diner scene is burned into my brain for nothing. And I think a lot of the viewers are like, well, what was the point of this? Originally, reality shows were kind of the original concept. Can these two random people find love? And the, if you look at the original dating shows. Wait, before you start, I just want to do this. Please. Before you start, we want to hear from you. Was their love ever real or was it all a showmance? Is what Al is saying. Please go to dblvote.com, continue to weigh in, continue. I would never say the word showmance, but <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say this. Sorry. Uh, you know, the original <laughs> dating shows, some people did hook up. They're, they're babies from them, and like Jeff and Jordan. Like, you can follow their love throughout the decades. That was the point. We knew everyone wasn't going to be a hit, but this one seemed especially contrived, Steph, and the fact that all of a sudden they're not going to move, and it was weird, and we're married, but we're living in separate states and se separate time zones. I don't know. I think the viewer is going to feel like their time was wasted. I think it's going to be tough for the second version of this show. But do you know, I think when you watch them, it's like watching fake people, like mannequins. There's no genuine expression He wasn't feeling. looking, it's I like, love this person. I love you so Right, much. right, Life right. Is good. We're still in love. It's weird. so weird. Uh, Creepy. Yeah, we're, all, we're, all, we're all sniffing something, right? Yeah, it, it smells you, worse than a Sunday fish market in Seattle in summer. There we go. Yes. <laughs> but to your point, to Steph's point, to Al's point. So first of all, you know, with The Golden Bachelor and with Gary, he already had a ton of controversies going in, right? So let's just kind of go over those. First, he was described on the series as a retired restaurateur. Then everybody pointed out to his LinkedIn that it appears that he had not owned a restaurant since 1985. Okay. Then some okay. women came forward. After he said he had not dated anyone since losing his wife, then women came forward being like, oh, I I dated him. I dated him. I dated him. In fact, one woman said that he was in a relationship with her and told reporters he made disparaging comments about her weight. <gasps> so now Gary. we can fast forward. Have more things come to light? Or is it the fact that they're both older? And, you know, we do get set in our ways when we are, you know, a, a, of, of a certain age. It's harder for people who have, you know, are, are in their 50s and their 60s to leave their families, to leave their jobs, to leave their home. So I understand that. But I also think this feels fake, like you all said, and it's a mockery of marriage in my totally. opinion. Totally. And when there's right. people all over the world, same-sex couples who can't even legally get married, and then you have these two, 
making well, a mockery of well, it. Can, 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 let me ask this. Can we see this show continue if they have grandparents, they're settled, like you said? I think it can. Will they move across the country like a 20-year-old could? I think that needs to be something that's stipulated. And this needs say, to be think? a learning lesson. So when you watch Love is Blind, they'll do it in an area like Colorado or Chicago, and you have to already be in that state. Sure, smart. sure, yeah. So that the people, you know, it's not, you're not uprooting your entire smart. life. And I think moving forward, they're going to have to do something like this because otherwise it's going to die This again. Who, who's interested in watching fake love? I mean, what's the point? It's yeah. So fake. And was Gary the wrong, wrong casting? Uh, I think I he's a bad guy. I find him so dull. Yeah. Just clap like, if you like Gary. Even, how clap. I oh, one no. person. Okay. No. One person. Daniel likes him. There, okay. You like it, Gary. I, there, I don't even know if there's anything technically wrong with Gary. <laughs> but the... <laughs> the <laughs> He's, Are we being too cruel um, to I don't like well, He's fine. I don't okay, either. So. But I'll, I'll yes. say this, Sam, really quickly, and don't lose your train of thought. Did they hold two spots for two people that genuinely wanted to be on the show, that genuinely could have right. found love? Like, I feel like they use this as some, some kind of publicity, but for what? They smelled, they've I, they played it wrong. I don't understand. No, they're not even interesting. Sorry. Right, right. And I want to, one thing, if you right, watch the whole GMA interview, even though they said they're so in love with one another, this contradiction, this walking contradiction really eats me up. Uh, they told GMA they will continue to look for love separately. <laughs> that's not love. No, no, and that's you know what? I that's just really lost no. maybe. That's maybe and love. That's, a, diff now that's a different show. Right, that is a that's different show. That's a couple okay. with a That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But can I say something? What you, you guys were all talking just made me realize why we're so annoyed. They are like insulting us. They are not trusting the audience. They're though. gaslighting us. Totally. We can smell it's not real. Don't insult our intelligence as viewers that, like, we love each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's weird. So just, I think it's not okay. Yep. So trust us to be a little bit smarter and than And look that. at the viewers. They, they agree. agree. Yeah. Yeah. What was real? 7% of you. Fake, 93% of you. We're going to interview Daniel about his love for Gary coming up next. Just kidding. Uh, coming up on DVL, O.J. Simpson's death has many thinking about the key figures from his trial. Where are they now? And our interview with Food Network star Noah Cap, how he's teaming up with Guy Fieri for a new show.
Welcome back to DBL. So the news of O.J. Simpson's death has put a spotlight once again on the trial of the century, which got us thinking about what happened to some of the trial's key players. So y'all remember O.J.'s lawyer, Johnny Cochran. He did pass away in 2005 from a brain tumor. He delivered one of the most famous lines from the trial. Let's watch. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Another lawyer from OJ's dream team, Robert Kardashian. Now, he died from cancer in 2003. His family, of course, has since found some fame as reality stars. You guys have heard of Absolutely. Okay. I was trying to figure out which one was which because they look so different now. I know. I'm just focused on the Courtney fact that looks he, exactly the same. Yeah. She does, I think Robert Kardashian looks a bit like Rache, my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Roche doing there? <laughs> That's so funny. Roche. All right, after the trial, F. Lee Bailey spent time in jail for actually being in contempt of court in another case. He ended up surrendering his stock worth millions and filed for bankruptcy. He died in 2021. I'm not trying to be funny, but like usually when you have just a one letter in front of your name, you doesn't. always have money. You have to have nobody J. that's like D. Rockefeller. Making, yeah, right, right, right. Those people right. are nodding. Yeah, yeah. No. interesting. Robert Shapiro continues to practice law and has even represented Robert Kardashian's son, Rob. Okay, um, interesting about that. <laughs> He's still alive. Uh, as for the and doing Broadway. <laughs> yeah, man, that hat was very surprising. Uh, as for the pers uh, prosecution, Marsha Clark resigned from the L.A. County There's DA's office and wrote a book about the case and several crime novels. There she is. Mm -hmm. Christopher Darden also resigned from the DA's office out, after the trial. He went on to write here. a memoir and has appeared on TV as a legal commentator you all remember Christopher Darden right yeah mm. yeah it, this it just kind of shows you like uh, this was the beginning of people having a secondary career like maybe not even realizing that they were sitting on something this big that they were going to work the trial of the century but then after that they all realized like wait I can continue to go on TV and I wonder if this is kind of the genesis for other legal figures that are now like in politics we or also just have a lot culture. of legal figures that have become talking heads totally and still to this day they reference back to the OJ Simpson trial in creating that so you're absolutely right Marsha Gay Harden though she really got the short end Marsha Clark I'm so sorry. No worries. <laughs> She's an excellent actress. Thank you very yeah. much. Marsha Clark got yeah. the short end of the stick. Like people you know, were only so focusing much. on her physicality. You know, they they weren't focusing on how well she did. And I, she even says to this day that it has hurt her career. Trauma. Yeah. And you know that's that's that spotlight can either amplify you or you, or it can tear you down. Absolutely. Here's what happened to some of the other key players. Remember Mark Furman? I'm sure we all do. An LA police detective and key witness for the prosecution until his history of using racist language came to light. Yep. Well, he retired from the force and now works for Fox News. Okay. Okay. As you may remember, it was Judge Lance Ito's decision to allow those cameras into the courtroom. He retired in 2015. Faye Resnick was Nicole's friend. She testified during the civil trial against OJ. She went on to write a book about Nicole and has appeared on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Keeping Up with the Kardashians. She's still very close with the Kardashians. Kato Kalin, who can forget about him, became America's most famous house guest. And now at 65, he's appeared on reality shows like Celebrity Big Brother. Yeah, that was great hair. Huh? I, I just I look at Kato Kalin and this is, sounds very weird to say, but he is the reason that people move to Los Angeles. No, because what? anything can happen. <laughs> Sam, he was staying in somebody's guest house and his career got dropped into his lap. Honestly, I mean, obviously it's a tragedy. You think he wanted his career to be associated with this? He did want to become an actor. Well, yeah, uh, it tainted him. It, it, 65 made, made television it, appearances tainted? It made tainted? him famous. Yes. I think he liked the spotlight. Why do you think spotlight? he was in L.A. to do uh, scientific yeah. research? No, so he <laughs> no. could become an actor. Not so he could be a figure inside the O.J. Simpson trial. It kind in of, my opinion. It stunted him, but I did think he liked stunted the, him. I did think he's only known as that, but I did think what he liked the spotlight. What if he would a soap star? Right. Well, as far, I just want to get to this. As far as the, the Goldman family, let's talk about the Goldman family here because people forget about them. They were awarded more than $30 million in the civil trial. They are now owed more than $100 million with interest. They say they will work on collecting it from OJ's estate. The Goldman family really has been the tireless uh, wheel of justice that has pushed on and on and on 
I also want to include Nicole Brown here. They often get forgotten in all of this, but the Goldman family in particular has pushed for some justice for her, their son. I think they were ground zero for me understanding that a judgment against you for some money or, or in your favor for money doesn't guarantee you're going to get it. There are so many legal loopholes that you can use to hide your money, squirrel your money away. They didn't get a fraction no. of what they were. So you can make it uh, $200 million. Uh, sadly, I don't think they're going to see any of that money. No, I hope they get something at the estate. I really, really do. We'll be right back. Oh, I've got a mission for you, bud. I've got a small town I want you to check out. You know, I'm busy here with my dental practice and diners, drive-ins, and dives, so what I'd like you to do is compile the bike club. Welcome back. That was a clip from a f new Food Network show where Guy Fieri assembles a team of fun-loving foodies to find the best bite in town. Earlier, we spoke with Noah Cap, the leader of the bike club. Take a look. Noah Cap. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I wanted a disguise for this one, but I didn't get it. Guy Fieri puts on disguises in the show, but his everyday look is pretty recognizable. So I wanted to ask you, Noah, which costume was the best costume for you? Uh, I mean, I, I, there's no way I'm going to ruin all the surprises. I think it's uh, one of my favorite things about the show is that the tone, like, right out of the gate, each episode starts with one of the these quirky little scenes where I'm like living my life and he just pops up. Uh, I did post <laughs> one from uh, the sneak peek where he's the crossing guard and it's just, that one killed me. <laughs> Oh, I think yeah. the coolest thing about Guy is every time I've heard somebody talk about him, everybody said he's the best guy ever. So I have to ask you, how did you first meet him? Uh, you know, uh, I was making a sandwich like right at this counter and my phone rang and I didn't answer it as I often don't. And I picked up the voicemail and it was him. And uh, that moment was as, I mean, I still have the voicemail saved. It was uh, being a foodie, being a person who had logged so many hours on the sofa watching Triple D marathons, uh, to hear his voice saying, I'm a fan of Carnival Eats and I wanted to reach out to ask you to be a judge on Triple G on Guy's Grocery Games. It was like an unbelievable moment. And I went out and we just connected. I think a friendship, a respect, uh, we just kind of clicked and over the years that grew and when this opportunity came up and he 
offered me the chance to be a part of such an epic, epic franchise uh, in so many ways. It was like really as cheesy as it is. It's like a dream come true. Yeah. No, that's awesome. You're walking in your purpose. Exactly. So, <laughs> this food is that what is, that is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the alignment. It's the alignment. So this food is a little more sophisticated than what you usually eat on Carnival Eats. So did you ever find yourself wishing they would just deep fry more stuff? <laughs> Uh, I think my body's okay with the break. Okay. I think, uh, you know, I'm still filming Carnival Leagues. I'm actually leaving uh, tomorrow to, uh, to uh, we're filming season 11 right now. Ooh. So the uh, the bacon wrap Twinkies are still getting deep fried <laughs> and I'll still be wearing those, don't worry. Um, it, it is nice though. I mean, I know Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives, even that brand, focuses on a certain style of food this this opens it up because we're spending the entire episode in one city or in one town uh you kind of get a, a chance to see a variety of different levels of food so there's something for everybody speaking of carnival eats literally <laughs> look it's been going strong for a decade like you said season season 11 coming up but you got to eat some weird stuff so i want to know what's the weirdest thing you ever ate at one of these carnivals I mean, we've cracked a thousand something foods now. It's uh, it's hard to believe. I'm uh, yeah. Uh, season one, I think the show was still trying to figure out, you know, what what we were and what types of foods we were we were uh, focusing on. And I did some weird things in those early seasons. We did deep fried rattlesnake. Oh, and, good. Ew. Uh, I hate that. If there's kids in the room, take them out for this story. Uh, I got into the kitchen with the vendor, and they had, uh, you know, head, tail, gone, skinned, ready to go in a bowl. But if oh. you shook the bowl, like 20, 30 minutes later, oh, no. it would it no. would move. No. Oh, wow. oh, no. The muscles. Yeah, like, like snake moves. <sighs> Yeah, I've, I've done that too. You cut, we had to hunt them and then, no, you know. I don't oh. want to hear it. Yeah, that, oh I, get, I know what you're saying gosh. with the moves, yeah. Speaking of strange yeah. fair food, is there any kind of fair food that you do not like and you won't even eat? Uh, I mean, maybe there's been one food in the history of the show that Tell I us. said to the production team. Uh, it was pig's feet. It was oh. stuffed pig's feet. And I was like... Uh, you know, is this something that other people even want to eat? Like, do they even want to know what it tastes like? Right. Or do we just have to kind of let this be for the people who are, like, caught in the woods and need to survive? <laughs> uh, that one, uh, luckily the vendor at the last second had a conflict and it never happened. Destiny stepped in that day. <laughs> Noah, thank you so much. What a pleasure having you here. DVL Nation, catch the premiere of Best Bite in Town this Friday at 9 p.m. on the Food Network. Thank you again. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you.
Welcome back to DBL. Loneliness not only impacts your mental health, it can lead to food addiction and obesity, which can all take a toll on your joints. So experts have linked loneliness to poor eating habits like junk food cravings and overeating. So what's something you do to avoid feeling alone? Well, I know when I'm alone instead of avoiding it. I don't love making food for one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That is what happens. You want to just like... You make all this work and then you're like, here I am. And it's, I don't know, I don't know. That's what I think I le it led me when I was single to just grab like t go, things grab and goes. Yeah, I feel like you've been good about finding friends and hanging out after. Yeah, I've been trying to and trying you've to. You've been really be good at that and I'm proud of yeah. you. Yeah, and I'm. you tend to, you can isolate. Yeah, and I, I can. relate to that because yeah. I isolate. But yeah. I've seen you really spread your wings and I Thank think that's you. great to work. Notice nobody's, Thank you. nobody's talking to Steph because Steph is always in, at the heart. I'm going to an art <laughs> opening. Yeah. And She's I'm going so to yeah. good at it. Yeah, no. She yeah. excels at it. I would say I don't think it's me. It's definitely my partner. He is way more sociable. He's like. Does it help you be less introverted because of that uh i think it forces me to make more effort and go out I and meet people that. i don't know yes. because i'm very used to like just sticking with the people that i do know that's yeah. me yeah. yeah well maybe find yeah that's good find someone and get you out of your comfort what do you call zone. it comfort zone there you go so something that can help your joints in addition to the daily exercise is omega xl it's a powerful joint support that's helped millions of consumers and it's backed by 30 years of clinical research omega xl's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes celebrities and dedicated daily users so call 1-800-630-5419 or visit omegaxl.com for more information someone wrote in oh. um, that they like speaking of reality tv couples the farmer wants a wife oh, here. oh so yeah farmer Every, wants wife is yeah, that what it, it is just wants farmer wife. want wife yes Farmer yeah. wants a wife. Now, they, that member, we had the host on the show, and she said that is the most successful That's show right. for oh, couples yeah, she, getting married. Why That's did, right. The women, choose, that is? Is, the women choose for themselves. They're personable, realistic, and homegrown, and it's being a farmer's wife is the life they want. More marriages have lasted from them. But yep. my friend won that show in <gasps> Australia, and no. it ended in disaster. Okay. No All way. Right. Yep. No way. Oh, Here's a nice see. note on a Friday. <laughs> You have a good There's weekend. There's no hope. Enjoy your no weekend. No hope. Bye, guys. <laughs>